Intel launched a broad portfolio of new products here at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. Under the themes Move Faster, Store More, and Process Everything, the second generation of Intel Xeon scalable processors and new Intel Optane DC persistent memory have already seen impressive results with Intel's partners. The GeekWire Studios team spoke with some of these partners to learn how they're using exciting new technologies to provide solutions for their customers. At Data Centric Innovation Day, I'm Brian Westbrook. This is Shift, presented by Intel and GeekWire. Tell us about some of the products that you're using with Intel and how that's changing the solutions you provide to your customers. Sure, I mean, uh, just to take off from even today, I mean, we are all about using the Intel Xeon processor, of course. And with the second generation uh, Intel Xeon that uh, was announced today, we're obviously a big proponent of it for various reasons such as security, better performance, and more importantly, it uh, also enables us to use the other new technology uh, that you folks announced today with the uh, Optane DC persistent memory. So we obviously will use both the processor and the new Optane technology in our products going forward. And uh, we're also thrilled about the deep learning boost uh, that was also announced since it gives us a chance to go out and provide that for our customers who are looking at a better solution for their AI machine learning workloads. Are you seeing a lot of your customers coming to you with this problem, wanting more AI processing, wanting this deal boost? We do have customers who come in and ask for the right solutions because typically the idea has been if you really want to get into AI machine learning, you need to go with the GPUs. Uh, but that's been, uh, you know, the norm. It's really not important for them, for all different workloads, to always use GPUs. It's absolutely applicable to look at FPGAs and also, uh, you know, going forward with DL Boost in the processor technology itself, I think will provide a rich set of choices for our customers so they can decide on what would best suit their workloads. I know it's early and the full rollout of the second generation Intel Xeon scalable processors is still underway, but what have you seen as far as early results by using these new processors? I think the biggest advantage of using these early processors is there's a sense of uh, trust that the security is at a higher level. Then of course, if you look at most of the results we have seen from the performance gains, we see about a 40% increase in performance, which I think is of tremendous value for our customers. So imagine there's more secure, higher performance. Should be easy for our customers to look at the value. Talking about AI uh, and analytics and the power of data, walk us through that panel, give us a little snapshot of what you covered and what topics really resonated as these are the key takeaways? I think uh, probably the three key important things that I think were, uh, you know, in my view, the highlights of the conversation we had. Number one, as much as people talk about AI machine learning, we are only at the very tip of the iceberg given the fact that only 2% of the data is literally being utilized today to do any kind of analytics which means that we have a huge data pile sitting there that we have not even harnessed, number one. Uh, number two, I think it's important that we also have the right planning with the right set of technologies. We have to look at a whole plethora of choices we have before we can go ahead and adapt and adopt to a certain technology. This is going back to, if we talk about AI machine learning, is it GPUs, is it FPGAs, is it you know, DL Boost that's available now. I mean, which is the right choice? I think you gotta go back and inspect before you make a call. And finally, I think it's also crucial that you actually understand what these workloads are in different industries and ensure that you have the right software and hardware coming together. I think are three main takeaways for me. What's next for Dell EMC? Uh, for us, it's all about you know being focused on what we call as customer-focused uh, innovation. Uh, so our goal is to ensure that we have the right focus and making sure that we get the right products and technologies that help our customers solve their own business problems, which is what we will continue to do, working in conjunction with Intel as a partner. Talk about that partnership for a second. What are you most excited about when it comes to Intel and Dell EMC? Our partnership has been over 25 years now. Uh, we have been closely associated with the R&D teams, which essentially means we are not coming at the cusp of the product rollout, but we are actually engaged right through 
the early inception days to design and validation, testing, and the whole amalgamation of uh, things that need to be processed to get a product out. So we have a very deep uh, and a rich tradition of working together closely, uh, which I think makes the relationship a lot more beneficial for both the sites. Thanks for watching Shift presented by Intel and GeekWire. I'm your host, Brian Westbrook. Don't forget, all of our videos are online at geekwire.com slash shift. Like, subscribe, and comment. We want to hear from you. That'll do it for now, but until next time, thanks for watching.